from Africa. It's a good morning. I don't know where you are, you are, how the things are there, but from Africa, we say good morning. We say a barrier subway. Yeah, from Africa. Yo guys, welcome to our channel today. Very interesting again. Another day. We're going to have a very interesting topic today. The channel is Nazvin. And kindly, I want to encourage you if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel because that is the best way in which you can always uh, support us. Today, we're going to talk about uh, hormonal imbalance in women. And I'm going to talk about 15 signs of hormonal imbalance in women. Previously, I've done a video on uh, hormonal imbalance in men, uh, where we talked about hormones like testosterone and the erythrol in men. Uh, we talked about progesterone also, where it is a relationship to how uh, hormonal imbalance comes up in men. So we're going to talk about 15 uh, signs of hormonal imbalance in, in women and uh, we're going to talk about it is management and also complications prevention and also uh, we're going to do a summary over the same so when we talk about hormonal imbalance in women it can manifest itself in various ways often affecting the physical emotional and mental health so when we take we talk about the hormonal imbalance signs they may indicate hormonal changes in the body. So number one, as a sign or as a symptom, which uh, one can experience is when we talk about irregular periods, uh, the most obvious uh, uh, thing which comes up with uh, when it is, it is in women, it is about irregular uh, periods. And when we talk about irregular periods, we are talking about the variation in menstrual cycle length. We know ladies have uh, sometimes uh, those who have 21 cycle, there are those who have uh, 28 cycle, there are those who have 31 cycle, and at some point now we have those who have irregular periods. So variation in the menstrual cycle length means periods are extremely heavy or light periods. So the absence also of periods is also a sign of uh, irregular periods. Number two is about weight gain or difficult losing weight. When we have hormonal imbalances, which uh, they impact metabolism and fat storage, so another sign which comes up is about weight gain or difficulty in losing weight because we have now the problem with the metabolism of the body of the lady. Number three is about fatigue. And when we talk about fatigue, it's persistent uh, tiredness or lack of energy. Uh, so, so that one comes, uh, uh, feels very tired despite uh, having that good rest. So you get that if you had that good rest, you are always experiencing uh, this kind of uh, fatigue. Number four is about mood swings. Mood swings is a sudden change in mood. Uh, anxiety comes in and also depression at the same time. Number five is about ins insomnia or poor sleep. This, uh, insomnia means lack of sleep where one is not able to sleep well and at the same time where you get that uh, one even if one gets uh, to want to sleep it has a lot of difficulty in sleeping so or staying asleep you find you you sleep in a very short time and uh, this affects how you respond to various uh, uh, situations number six is about acne Adult acne, particularly around the jawline and the chin, when we talk about the jaw, the jawline is here, and also uh, and the and the chin here, you have some uh, acnes which come up in those areas. That's a sign of uh, hormonal imbalance. Hair loss or thinning. Uh, if you find your hair is uh, dropping out or thinning out. And also, you are now developing what you call alopecia, uh, which is an explained hair loss or a thinning of the hair, can be a sign of hormonal imbalance. Consequently, uh, number seven, number eight, we have excessive hair growth, where unwanted hair growth on the face, chest, or other areas, 
most of the time in the ladies we expect the skin to be not with a lot of hair because of the common female hormones which are available but uh, at this particular point you find hairs growing everywhere and wanted on the face uh, chest or other areas number nine is about hot flashes and night sweats they are common uh, which are very common during the menopause or a, a time that's what we expect uh, ladies to develop this but during this time round we have uh, hot flashes and night uh, sweats because of hormonal imbalance number 10 is about low libido or we have now this is the decreased interest to sex sex or sexual activity because of the hormonal changes we have also breast changes where we have tenderness swelling slumps in the breasts number 12 is about digestive issues where one develops a bloating diarrhea and a constipation at the same time number 13 is about memory problems uh, where the, uh, where are now difficult in concentrating or w one experiences what we call brain f uh, brain fog where are difficult in concentrating and experiencing the brain fog number 14 is about headaches uh, the frequent or severe headaches of an uh, related to menstrual cycles so you you find one experiencing a lot of headaches uh, at that particular time number 15 is about vaginal dryness or discomfort or uh, and this one becomes a, 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 like a discomfort uh, during the sexual experience one experiences pain due to insufficient uh, lubrication so guys if you experience or your partner experiences these symptoms it may be worth consulting your healthcare provider for further evaluation and potential treatment because you may be having one or two of these and it can be something else so it is good always to always uh, uh, sort this out with your healthcare provider or your doctor to approach this issue as uh, much as possible so that uh, you get uh, the appropriate help as consulted so on the part of management of these 15 signs of uh, uh, hormonal imbalance in, in women managing hormonal imbalance or imbalances often is a multi-phased uh, approach so addressing both underlying causes and symptoms is very important and uh, i'm going to mention some of the strategies which can be employed for managing hormonal imbalance in women and uh, i'm going to classify them in terms of medical treatments diet and nutrition exercise stress management uh, supplements lifestyle changes monitoring and regular checkups professional support so uh, there are around eight aspects which we use to manage the hormonal imbalance i'm going to start with the medical uh, attention or medical treatment number one is about hormonal replacement therapy what we call hrt usually uh, uh, especially during menopause to, to balance the estrogen and the uh, progesterone uh, levels also part control pills are used in the medical treatments which can help the regulate the menstrual cycles and alleviate the symptoms like the acne and excessive uh, growth and also thyroid medications can be introduced where for imbalance related to the thyroid issues uh, medication can help normalize the hormones uh, what i want to mention and uh, this is a research which has been done uh, most of the hormonal imbalance situations uh, starts with the thyroid so ladies it is always good to get your thyroid uh, checked by your doctor uh, normally we call thyroid function test to be done where you get your t3 t4s uh, hormonal levels checked and uh, kept in check at that particular point number two approach in management of hormonal imbalance we have what you call uh, diet and nutrition in diet and nutrition number one we are talking about balanced diet eating diet rich in fruits uh, vegetables lean proteins and whole grains is very important in the in this aspect Redu uh, reducing sugar and also refined carbs uh, so we want to reduce uh, as much as possible we reduce the sugar intake and also the intake of uh, refined uh, carbohydrates so this because this can affect the uh, insulin levels and the hormonal balance 
healthy foods for fats is also a very important three uh, important too because things like omega-3 fat acids like which come from uh, a fish and also flax seeds and walnuts are really encouraged at this particular point number three is about exercise regular physical activity is very important to help maintain healthy weight and uh, reduce stress which can impact their hormonal levels and also on the exercise we are talking about strengthening uh, training where which supports muscle mass and also metabolism number four very important also is about stress management aspects where relaxation techniques such as yoga meditation and deep breathing exercises can help uh, reduce stress and also cortisol levels and also adequate sleep as a perform of stress management where we are encouraged to sleep for seven to nine hours of quality sleep per night to support hormonal health number five is about supplements also can be employed in the as part of management of hormonal imbalance where vitamins and minerals are introduced they show intake of essential nutrients like vitamin d uh, b and also magnesium as a, com a big component in this area we, ha we have uh, uh, also the other part of herbal supplements like maca root, uh, black cohosh, just a berry may help more mono balances but this when we talk about uh, herbal supplementation you must consult with your healthcare provider if they are appropriate because sometimes they may also interrupt and also bring more problems or cause more harm uh, than good at that particular point Number six aspect on hormonal balance management is about lifestyle changes and uh, avoid toxins, reduce exposure to endocrine disruptors uh, found in plastics, pesticides and uh, certain personal care products, very important. Number, number two on these lifestyle changes we are talking about quitting alcohol and also smoking because both negatively impact hormonal balance. Number seven is about monitoring and uh, the regular checkups. Regular blood tests monitor hormonal levels periodically uh, to adjust treatment as needed so that uh, and also tracking symptoms, keep a journal of symptoms to identify patterns and also triggers. So you need to understand yourself in a case of any, any body changes where you can also help your health care provider to guide you as appropriate. Uh, number eight aspects on uh, mono, mono imbalance management is about professional support. And the console, with this, we are talking about consulting your endocrine, endo, endocrinologist or the gynecologist at the same time. These are specialists who can provide targeted treatment and plans on your way of uh, getting out of hormonal imbalance. Number two is about uh, the other aspect on the professional support. We are talking about therapists and counselors where for managing stress, anxiety or depression related to uh, hormonal imbalances. By addressing the lifestyle and working closely with the healthcare provider, many women can effectively manage the symptoms of hormonal imbalance and improve their uh, overall health being. Unfortunately, I don't want like addressing the complications, but uh, complications come up if these things are not well managed. And when we talk about uh, these uh, uh, complications, number one complication which comes up is about uh, the obvious one is about uh, infertility. Infertility crops, crops in at this particular point uh, because uh, when uh, uh, in irregular or abs absence of uh, menstrual cycle make it difficult to conceive when already develops things like uh, things which are like menopausal symptoms. So number two is about osteoporosis and when we talk about osteoporosis it comes about with the low estrogen levels which can lead to the decreased bone density and also increasing the risk of fractures. So when uh, with the osteoporosis you are predisposed to fractures as a complication. Number three is about uh, cardiovascular diseases or issues. Imbalances like estrogen and the thyroid hormones can increase the risk of heart disease and hypertension. So this, that is how serious this thing is and we should uh, approach it as as, as early as possible. Weight gain and obesity also is a complication as a complication of hormonal imbalance yeah, because insulin resistance often linked to hormonal imbalance uh, like uh, can cause uh, things like uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome or a PC, PCOS or a PCOC 
can lead to type 2 diabetes. So PCOS is very common or polycystic ovarian syndrome and this can lead to diabetes. Uh, uh, number five is about weight gain and obesity. Hormonal imbalances can contribute to weight gain and difficulty losing weight, further exacerbating other issues. Number six is about mental health disorders where chronic anxiety crops in, uh, depression and the mood swings can significantly affect the quality of life and overall mental health. Number seven is about uh, disorder, uh, sleep disorders where persistent sleep disturbances can lead to chronic fatigue, cognitive impairment and other problems. Number eight complications about reproductive health issues. So conditions like PCOS can cause ovarian cysts, abnormal uterine bleeding and other, and other reproductive health uh, problems. Number nine is about skin and hair issues where skin acne comes in which are very severe Hair loss comes in and one the hair growth can lead to psychological distress and self-esteem issues when you find hair growing everywhere on the body of a lady who initially was very smooth, now you find the hairs are disturbing everywhere and they grow where they are seen and this really affects the self-esteem of the lady. Endometrial population and the cancer is also up because of the prolonged exposure to an, oppo an opposed estrogen where very high estrogen without progesterone hormone can lead to endometrial aplasia, which may increase the risk of endometrial cancer, but unfortunately. Adrenal fatigue is also another thing which comes in, where untreated thyroid imbalances can result in hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, which affect the metabolism of the body, now affecting the energy levels and overall health of one. Chronic pain comes about conditions like endometriosis, over linked to abnormal uh, hormonal imbalances can cause chronic pelvic pain and also at, at some point as a complication also we have cognitive impairment because of the long-term hormonal imbalances they can affect the memory concentration and overall cognitive uh, function also we have thyroid disorders uh, where which comes in and treated thyroid imbalances can lead to hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism which affect the energy levels metabolism and also the overall well, uh, well-being of the woman. So addressing the hormonal imbalances early through proper medical care, uh, lifestyle changes and ongoing monitoring can prevent this complication and promote the better uh, long-term uh, well-being of an individual. So how can we prevent these uh, uh, complications of hormonal imbalances? Preventing hormonal imbalances involves involving healthy lifestyle, being productive, uh, proactive about your health. So you should be very keen on yourself. So, so very important, uh, this uh, pre on the prevention part of it, uh, uh, preventing uh, hormonal uh, imbalances involves uh, maintaining healthy lifestyle and uh, being proactive about uh, your health. And some of the strategies you can employ to prevent hormonal imbalances in women, number one is about health diet as a form of prevention. So that pre uh, actually plays a very important role in uh, preventing hormonal imbalance. That's very important, ladies and gentlemen. It's because balanced dieting, especially when we talk about balanced nutrition, is a very great component which can help uh, one get to uh, approach this issue of hormonal imbalance at any point. So balanced uh, nutrition, by we mean eat a uh, variety of old, fo old foods, including fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and all grains that are very important in the aspect of hormonal balance. Uh, healthy fats, in comparison of omega-3 fat, fatty acids, uh, like fish, flax seeds, and walnuts, that's a, that's a very great component when we talk about healthy diet as a form of prevention of hormonal imbalance in any lady and uh, in this approach. Also, very important, limit sugar and refined carbohydrates. So reduce intake of sugary foods and beverages and opt for complex uh, carbohydrates. Regular exercise as a form of prevention. Consistent physical activity aiming at, uh, to, uh, by aiming at least 30 minutes of exercise or mo uh, most days of the week is very important. 
and also strength training can really help to support the muscle and uh, bone health at that particular point. So uh, stress management is also a very great component. If you need, uh, if you think that you need uh, the help of your healthcare provider, especially the counselor, to practice to help you, uh, 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 you, you may approach that person. Also, uh, relaxation techniques are very important, and I've mentioned them in most of our videos. We talk about practicing yoga, meditation, deep breathing exercises to reduce uh, stress. So stress management is a very great uh, component in the management of hormonal imbalance. Adequate sleep, 7 to 9 hours of, of quality sleep, not being on bed, just being on the bed, but uh, uh, really having that rest is very important for you ladies that, uh, of 7 to 9 hours to support uh, the hormonal health. Number four, we are talking about health uh, weight management, maintain the healthy weight. So to achieve a uh, healthy weight, through, uh, we must work on our diet and exercise to reduce the risk of uh, hormonal imbalance. Number five is about avoiding uh, toxins, reduce exposure to uh, endocrine disruptors. So by minimizing contact with the chemicals in plastics, pesticides and certain personal care products. Also choose uh, natural products, opt for organic foods and natural personal uh, items uh, such as uh, when, uh, when possible. So number six is about regular uh, medical checkup as a cup for prevention of hormonal imbalance. So annual exams, visit your healthcare provider for regular checkups to monitor your overall health and, the car, and also that to catch any imbalances at the screenings. Get regular screens for thyroid function, like I've mentioned, blood sugar levels, and other relevant tests as recommended by uh, your doctor at that particular point. Supplements and nutrition, very important. Essential nutrients such as uh, vitamin D, B, uh, and also magnesium supplements are very important. And there's a component of herbal supplements, but this you need to, uh, to be consult consulted by your healthcare provider because uh, Things like chasta berry can also be very important, and the maca root can really help in uh, hormonal imbalance. But this you need to consult with your healthcare provider. Number eight is about prevention. I mean, prevention health lifestyle choices by avoiding excessive alcohol intake, and uh, you quit smoking because they interrupt the hormonal balance and overall health. Also, on these health lifestyle choices, we talk about hydration, drink plenty of water of safe water to support metabolic processes and also hormone production. Also very important is about how you manage your chronic illnesses and when we talk about chronic illnesses these are the conditions which are in our body for a, a long time or we are in medication over the same. So properly manage things like PC, uh, PCOS or PCOC, diabetes and thyroid disorders uh, with the help of your healthcare provider so that they are, they are put at a level where they can't disrupt your hormones as appropriate. Number 10 is about listening to your body. And when we talk about listening to your body, keep a journal of any changes in the menstrual cycle, mood, energy levels and other, and, and other symptoms to identify uh, any changes early and also seek uh, the intervention as early as possible. So listen to your body for any changes, and this is uh, applicable to any to any person, man, either male or female. Always, when you find there are some changes which have taken place in your body, it's always good to see your your healthcare provider to help you as appropriate as possible, so that you don't get into a, a lot of uh, problems. Guys, uh, preventing hormonal imbalance in women involves holistic approach centered on health uh, lifestyle and practice uh, health management. Key strategies which we, we, we can mention in our, in our past is a healthy diet, regular exercise, stress management, weight gain management, avoiding toxins, regular medical checkups, uh, supplements, health lifestyle choices uh, by avoiding uh, smoking, limiting alcohol and also staying hydrated, manage chronic illnesses like PCOS, diabetes and thyroid disorders and also listening to your body. Hormonal imbalance in women can have significant impact on health and the well-being.
but they can be managed and even prevented with the proactive measures. But so, but guys, by adopting a holistic approach that includes uh, maintaining health, diet, regular exercise, effective stress management, and avoiding the toxins, uh, women can support their hormonal health and reduce uh, the risk of imbalances. So, regular medical checkups, proper management of chronic illnesses. And listening to the body signals are also very crucial for mono health and also the body well-being. With the strategies in place, women can strive uh, to, for mono can strive for mono balance and enjoy optimal health and vitality through their lives. Guys, welcome. The channel is Nasbin. Kindly, if you have not subscribed, uh, I want to encourage you to subscribe. And I want to welcome you to our next video. Peace, guys, and we love you very much.